A couple of 125s out there mixing it up with the 250Fs. Not such the case out here now in the uh, senior Su Supercross lights class here. And we're just waiting to come in to start his orders. But again, look for Josh Coppins on that number six. Up the inside, hogging it, maybe pushing the riders a little bit wide. There's dirt in the first turn here is looking a little bit loose, a little bit dry. A couple of rocks, could mix it up. The gate's about to drop. And Coppins out again, but 2-2-3 two, two, tries to squeeze him in. McGoldrick! Oh, that was smooth. From right the outside. The outside, just railed it. Is leaping off. That is ultra aggressive after the uh, trans diesel straightaway through there. He is trying to show a clean set of heels to Josh Collins, but a little bit of an over jump is all it takes in there, and you lose that hundredth of a second gap. You just gave yourself, and Josh back up onto the rear wheel already of McGoldrick. And who had the timing through there? Josh jumping, no, sticking to the outside, so not trying to show a wheel to the Honda Pilot just yet as they come through again there's a little bit of dust coming off the track that's when the dirt loses just a little bit of moisture and you can usually judge the wind a little bit by that too as they come through to complete the first lap both going to the inside after the first line triple your one two three same positions as what they were in that first photo with Madison Ladder rounding out the top three on that Husky there we and then we look back, obviously that's KDM and Blake Ditchfield in fourth, but uh, he's just been passed there, so, but whoa, what a, you can't, what do you say about Micah, he absolutely bent himself around the outside there, and he did not let off, there was no breaking in that, and you've got to commend the guy for, you know, just believing in himself. Man, I'd love to see that again, that was an absolute surprise to me, I was looking at the battle between 223 and Josh Coppin's six up the inside, and bam, and that bright pink and black fly gear, Mike just came ripping around and you, you'd have to say it was, it was 10 out of 10 for style, technique and speed but at the moment it's all about 8 or 9 bike lengths I guess between those front two and the body English of Josh Coppins looks a wee bit more aggressive than it did in Moto 1. Absolutely and you know what, Josh has got a massive points lead, he doesn't actually need to win this but it's a pride thing I think and you know Josh is a competitor through and through, he will not want to lose against Micah. And, what, and we just look back to the third place, Madison Ladder there. Maddie is doing himself no disservice by what he's achieving right now. He's not that far off the pace of those front two, which is outstanding. You know, young fellow, only 17, 18 years old, just fresh out of high school, and he's out there battling with some of the country's best. Yeah, he's, um, he was just telling me earlier, actually, he's doing a motorcycle apprenticeship. Uh, for a, a Honda shop, actually. Oh, really? He did. His dad was saying he was pulling for him, but uh, Crazy Dave said, Dave's out of here. He's going with the motorcycles. <laughs> and there you go. So this went from eight or nine bike links to about four or five now out in front. So, yeah, Madison Ladder and third doing well, but it's all eyes at the front in that Suzuki corner. As they come around the right hand of Josh with the wider line, Micah holding it up the inside, but now will Josh dive to the inside? No. Just that corner speed that Josh is carrying right now is just yeah. on another level. I know, he's not normally used to roll, and here he goes, he's going to make a move, he is, but it doesn't hold, and Micah runs him wide before the work, so all on oh. out front, Josh is not happy, Josh Mike is not happy. What, did Josh just scrub the wall double? Yeah. Yeah. That is something else. Here we go. What do they got? I think it's going to be a bit of follow the leader for the next la couple of corners and lane. But uh, as we head back to the woods, uh, when we get back to the end of the Trans Oil laneway there, let's watch for Josh to really try and get up the inside of Mike there. It's a great run if you can get into. Now it's three bike lengths. So Trans Diesel back straight away there again. On, off, down. And doubles up into that Suzuki right hander. So that's the opposite lines of what they chose in the last lap where Josh went wide and Michael went up the inside, but that lap it was the opposite. So now one bike thing between these guys out the front and you could throw a blanket across them. Here, this is where we tried to make the move before and McGoldrick said, uh-uh, no buddy. And there we go, Josh again up the inside, almost the lines come together. Do you see that? Yeah, it looks like Josh is just recouping a wee bit. He's just not quite that aggression there. Just for a lamp, we're trying to get some breathing. Uh, breathe in, breathe out, you know, really get the oxygen flowing. If we starting to swell up, you know as well as anyone, Lockie, when you're in the heat of the battle, your body fall, not falls apart, but it, it stops forgetting what it needs to do. So you've got to remind yourself. And I think Josh is going to put another hard time. 
charging him, but looking at Josh Wheeling there, he is not giving up whatsoever, but Micah is riding outstanding race. Very, very smart riding from the young man from, who, well, he was Christchurch, but is now uh, Ringiora, but is now Tauranga. So now the same line through there, and Josh has given away a few bike links, so it really didn't, didn't work out too well for him. It's, uh, and then he goes and makes up a little bit of time again, so maybe I'll just keep my mouth shut. But as they come through the whoops now, see Josh, they didn't bother trying to scrub the wall jump that time. Both going into that next part of the turn. Alright, so still no sign of the white flag just yet. On the last lap, Josh was a bit closer. I thought he was going to go up the inside, but he chose not to. Maybe going for a bit of that clean ear, like you were saying before, Jerry, but he doesn't have a lot of laps left. Well, he just wait till the last lap, maybe. Pass, make it stick. That's got, that takes a lot of self-belief and commitment to know you can pull finger, twist the throttle and absolutely do it on the last lap. But uh, right now, I just I don't know what Josh is quite playing. It's not that he's playing at anything, but I just think he's just not quite where he needs to be to make capitalise. Maybe he's just trying to pressure Micro into a mistake. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, the racecraft's always going to be there with Josh Coppins, even if the uh, explosive business isn't. But it, the close just mixing up their lines a little bit. And I tell you what... This is an awesome motor. Uh, we are, I know, and we've also been a little bit selfish by not talking about the rest of the riders out there, but honestly, it's not every day you see a battle with New Zealand Supercross champs where they're going toe-to-toe -to -toe like that, and I think we are very, very fortunate to be witnessing it, not only in person here, but the live streaming on the internet right now. All right, so there we go, white flag, and it's two bike links. It's one bike link, it's half a bike link, and Josh Coppins in second place behind the gold ring who is riding awesome, a half a bike length as they come down the Trans Diesel straight away into that Suzuki right-hander. Again, they choose different lines, a lapper gets out of the way, I think that was Liam Hutton. They're coming through now, triple, and it oh. gets paced a little bit. That might be the difference. I think that might be Josh just coming up a little bit short and bouncing through that like that, but uh, oh, what a race. Winded, put your hands together for one of the best races I have ever oh. witnessed. Josh Coppins just pushes a little bit too hard. Oh. And a case coming through there, yeah. right there. option I saw here before was going to come into this right-hander where Micah is now, but Josh is too far back and it looks like it's going to be all red. How about that, Winded? Put your hands together, Micah McGoldrick. Easy, one of the best races I've ever seen in my seven years here. Yes, that was what a phenomenal. Treat. Young dog, old dog, and that was all class. Well done to both riders on that one. Josh won't be happy, but I tell you what. McGoldrick just absolutely put in a phenomenal ride. It's one of the best rides I've seen him. I've seen him since he was on an 80. Coming here today, that'll be one of the highlights of his career. And if he can do the same thing in the next photo, round three of racing, he'll take the overall. Yeah, and that, uh, that's what they're looking for. There's some good prize money up today. I think it's one of the highest price paying races of the year coming up, oh, sorry, coming up this, this weekend. So the boys are actually they're racing for pride, but they're also racing for a paycheck. And we look down, I hear the 450, Series 450 Honda of Cody Cooper just revving in the background there.